A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn us. Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. While reflecting on this reading, I was reminded of something Father Mark said in his homily last Sunday. He said how whenever we go on any kind of retreat, we are often confronted with all the bad stuff about us. Through the silence of a retreat and the time with God, we are made more aware of our sinfulness, our weaknesses, and our general shortcomings. And taking together all of these help us to see the roadblocks that we have set up in our lives that prevent us from living our lives as God would want us to do. If we think of Lent as a time of retreat, a time to strip away many of the distractions of everyday life and to put ourselves into God's presence more often, this should happen to us as well during Lent. The slower pace and the simplicity of Lent allow us the chance to examine our lives and to see what is holding us back from God. We see our sinfulness, we see our failings, and deep down, we know that we do not always live the lives that God has called us to live. We are confronted with the fact that we struggle with and we confess the same sins over and over and over again. We don't fully appreciate where God is present in our lives because we're distracted by so many things. Because of all this, we can end up becoming depressed, and we struggle to get out of this mess. But the more we struggle, the tougher it is to get out. We feel helpless in trying to live a fully Christian life. We struggle to become holy as God is holy. We end up in this sort of spiritual quicksand where the more we struggle and the more we fight against this, the deeper we sink. We end up feeling stuck in the mud, covered in our sinfulness and our shame. We know that we cannot overcome all of this, but God can. If God is for us, who can be against us? What can be against us? And as St. Paul says, God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? As much as we desire to be holy, God desires us to be holy even more than we do. But God doesn't want us to just be passive on this journey of holiness. God wants us to be active participants in his love, constantly responding to this invitation. God has put different people into our lives and has put us into different events to help us better respond to that invitation to love him more. As we sit in our struggles, God is there constantly holding out his hand to us, wanting us to grab onto his hand to have God pick us up and to have us follow him. I think of the apostles in this sense. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they could all have continued their lives as fishermen and lived good, holy Jewish lives. But there was something in Jesus' call that called them to something more. And the same thing with Matthew. He could have stayed as, as a tax collector, just done what he was always doing, but something in God's call struck him, and he followed Jesus. A wonderful example that is close to all of us, I think, is the example of St. Dominic. St. Dominic easily could have spent his whole life as a canon in his cathedral at Osma, and he would have lived a very holy life. But when his bishop called him to travel with him to Denmark, there was something in Dominic that caught his attention. And Dominic took that step, went outside his cathedral, went with the bishop, and we're all here because Dominic took that step. 
he had no idea what was about to come of his life. He had no idea he was going to become the founder of an order of preachers. But he trusted that God was going to do something in his life. So in the season of Lent, let us not stay paralyzed by our sins and our failings. Instead, let us grab hold of God's hand and be raised up by him. Then, as we hold on to him, let us follow God faithfully and joyfully, knowing that with God, nothing can stand against us. Dear Lord.